Trigger warning. This video contains descriptions of slavery, police violence, and racist ideas. Please watch at your own discretion. If you choose to watch this video, please do what is needed to take care of yourself. For example, if the content becomes overwhelming, take a break from watching. After viewing this video, it may be helpful to engage in a mindfulness exercise. A suggested mindful practice can be found in the description for this video. Hello everyone, and welcome back to the video series, The White Lie. This week I'd like to continue where I left off a few weeks ago, by continuing to trace the thread of white supremacy from the Jim Crow era to the present day. This is an important part of our country's history that is clearly connected to the experiences of all people today. In this video, I hope to show how Jim Crow was an era of pivotal change for the lie of white supremacy, and note how, in many ways, Jim Crow is still with us today. There is an old saying that goes, the greatest trick the devil ever played was convincing the world he didn't exist. That is equally true when you replace the devil with white supremacy. The years of American history after the Civil War are defined by the insidious, purposeful veiling of white supremacy by white persons. After a brief period of reconstruction, Jim Crow laws, which got its name from a song that portrayed black Americans in racist stereotypes, were implemented to segregate blacks from whites through a Supreme Court-affirmed doctrine of separate but equal. Separated though the races were, the reality was that they were far from equal. Policies and laws were created that specifically and almost surgically disempowered and disenfranchised black Americans. Political power for black people was all but eradicated, with many black majority counties and parishes having no black persons registered due to racist poll taxes, literary tests, and policies with literal grandfather clauses designed to include whites and exclude blacks. Furthermore, when separate facilities were legally required for black persons, often for their supposed benefit, those facilities were almost entirely inferior, neglected, and relegated black persons to a second-class citizenship. All the while, socially, white people continued to enforce segregation through lynching and mob destruction of black property. However, due to the doctrine of separate but equal, white supremacy was able to lie and lie and lie about why these policies were implemented. The fundamental lie was that segregation benefited all. However, every discriminatory policy had a lie attached to it that allowed white supremacy to hide in plain sight. For example, poll taxes, which charged individuals a tax before they would be allowed to vote, were implemented at, by states at a level which would be affordable to middle-class whites, but we burden some enough to poor blacks as to prevent their participation in voting altogether. These taxes were framed as essential to the state government budget, a necessity required to maintain state services. Similarly, literacy tests, which required voters to pass a nearly impossible timed test of reading and writing ability was supposedly put in place to ensure voters could understand who and what they were voting for. However, many of these laws had a clause which allowed people whose relatives could vote prior to 1865 to avoid taking the test. However, what is neglected in these laws is the fact that prior to 1865, only white men could vote. Many of these laws, including literacy tests and poll taxes, were not changed or repealed until the 1960s, or in some states, even the 1980s. Even as Brown versus Board of Education and the Civil Rights Act brought an end to legal segregation, white supremacy continued to adapt and find new ways to hide itself. Through the 1960s, 70s, and 80s, the Civil Rights Movement began to be framed by white people in charge of writing the history books not as the beginning of continuous and ongoing radical change, but as the end of racism in America. Whites began to be taught that to acknowledge race at all is a racist act that must be avoided. I mean, after all, aren't we all equal now? With this colorblindness came a new way to hide white supremacy. Nowadays, 
whites can rest easy in their supremacy by holding tightly to the myth of meritocracy, the idea that all persons individually earn their place in society purely as a result of their actions. However, this lie ignores the reality of the new Jim Crow. Laws, policies, and enforcers of those laws and policies who disproportionately affect non-white folks. Non-whiteness is thus criminalized by the continuation of a criminal system that, by design and by tradition, favors white people and imprisons persons of color. As always, I want to end by noting that this is a flyby viewing of the last hundred years of American history. It highlights one singular strand of the tapestry of white supremacy, while hinting at the rotten threads interwoven. For a deeper understanding and to help broaden this discussion, here are some resources that helped me put together this video and the series as a whole. Thank you for watching, and I hope you'll join me next week, where we will begin to tug at some of those other strands of white supremacy. In particular, we'll begin next week by examining the roots of white supremacy within the criminal justice system and see how that directly affects all of our individual everyday lives. Goodbye for now.